if I had my way, drug abuse would be a topic of daily discussion in the public sphere across Nigeria. If not for anything, but to heighten society's awareness about the need to act decisively, urgently, and comprehensively against this pervasive, destructive habit. <clears throat> I believe the relative passivity of society towards the illicit drug issue, the failure to keep it on the front burner as a topical issue in the past decade was partly responsible for the precarious situation in which Nigeria presently finds itself. Today, the country's drug use prevalence is both worrying and embarrassing almost three times the global threshold. For those that can read correctly the implications of Nigeria's illicit drug figures, there is reason to be alarmed. At this juncture, I feel that curbing the abuse and trafficking of illicit drugs has become a colossal task that requires collective tackling by society. The Nigerian drug statistics, I dare say, should give every one of us sleepless nights. If the global drug use prevalence is 5.6% and Nigeria's drug prevalence is 14.4%, isn't that a wake-up call for us all to arrest the trend? With the benefit of my experience as chairman of the Presidential Advisory Committee, on the elimination of drug abuse procedure and my present assignment here uh, in the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, I have come to realize that while indeed a large section of our society claims to know what the term drug abuse implies, the understanding is vague and shallow. That is why these days I am motivated to avail myself of every opportunity to speak about the dynamics of drug abuse, the danger it poses for the individual and the devastation it portends for society that is lame and, and lackadaisical with tackling it. Therefore, it is an understatement to tell you that I am delighted stand here before you to speak on the topic drug abuse and the future of Nigeria. There couldn't have been a better time. This is a golden opportunity. An equally disturbing dimension of drug abuse concerns the misuse of substances not yet captured as illicit drugs by the non-conventions. Such substances, no less dangerous, come under different names and are generally grouped under the nomenclature of new psychoactive substances, NPS. Their production and sale are often carried out with impunity, which tends to deceive users that they are legal, hence the term legal high. They come in different forms, such as designer cannabis, aphrodisiac tea, herbal incense, social tonic and party pills, to mention but a few. The common ones on the street are herbal concoctions. The best known examples are the so-called monkey tail, a brew of cannabis and liquor, and scotches, a dangerous mix of zobo, cannabis, codeine, and tramadol tablets, which young people crave at parties. Some of us here can relate to the habit of citizens buying some unknown herbal potion from sellers at motor parks, on the street, or at social parties. Consumers hardly inquire about the composition of the drinks. All they care about is that such drinks make them active. The danger of NPS is obvious. They have no recommended dosage are untested and contain some of the most dangerous illicit elements that could lead to the destruction of body organs such as kidneys 
and liver. What is false is that the number of NPS is unknown and they vary from one place to another.